Hi, my name's Joe, and I'm part of the Walsingham House team. We live here at Walsingham House, which is just outside of Brentwood. Normally we'd welcome groups here on retreat, but seeing as we can't do that anymore, we're here this morning to lead you in your assembly. I want to begin today's assembly by asking you a question. Have you ever been in a really, really bad storm? When the whole sky goes completely dark and black? Have you heard rain lashing down onto a rooftop? Have you heard the wind so fierce that it's shaking the doors and the windows? If you have, I want you to bear that in mind. Take your, take your mind back to that point in your life. Remember what you saw, what you heard, what you felt. And what emotions did that make you feel being caught in that storm? And as you remember that, I'm going to tell you a little story about when I was younger. When I was 10, we went on a family holiday to America. And I was so excited, I couldn't wait to get out there. But as we were beginning to land, as the plane was coming down to the runway, a storm had begun. It was really, really dark outside. And as I was looking outside, the wings were going up and down. And as the plane hit the tarmac, it juddered to a stop. It was quite a scary moment. And as we got off the plane, we were told that a hurricane was coming and we had to get to our hotel as quickly as possible. So we got in the car that we were hiring. And my dad began driving through the afternoon, but it was so dark, it felt like it was the middle of the night. There was such fierce wind shaking the trees. There were stop signs being blown around everywhere. It was really, really worrying. I remember looking out the windscreen of the car and it was so heavy with rain that my dad could barely see as he was driving. Eventually we got to the hotel and we got inside, but there'd been a power cut and the power remained off for a whole 24 hours. So all this excitement that I had to be on holiday was suddenly gone and it was replaced with fear. I'd never been in an experience like that before. That night we sat in the hotel room and I could barely sleep. All we had was a single candle. There was no dinner available at the hotel. So we had to just eat the snacks that we had left over from our journey. We played cards to kind, kind of keep our mind off it, try and focus on, a, on not what was going on outside, but focus on ourselves. And it was just really, really scary. I don't think I slept a wink that night. But I remember waking up in the morning and things had really calmed down. Yeah, there was lots of damage everywhere. Trees had been knocked over. Rooftops had been ripped off buildings, but we were safe and so was everyone else in the hotel. And the next morning, as the sun was beginning to break and the rain had kind of stopped, there was an odd sense of peace around. And as people began to emerge, everyone was kind of joyful that it was over and that we were all still together. And that's what we're gonna be reflecting on a little bit more this morning when we look at this story of the calming of the storm. When Jesus is with his disciples in the boat on a lake and there's a huge storm going on. And we're going to look at the other side of that, the peace that comes when the storm has gone. And I've begun with that story today because right now life feels a little bit like we're all caught up in a storm. Things aren't as they normally are. It's a bit scary, it's a bit worrying. But I want to leave you with some words from Pope Francis. Back in March of last year, Pope Francis spoke to the whole world and he prayed for everyone as we were beginning to enter this really uncertain and scary time of the pandemic. And he used the story of the calming of the storm as a basis for the words that he told everyone. And for me personally, the most powerful part were these words that you'll see up on the screen in a second. We have realized that we are all on the same boat. All of us fragile and disorientated, but at the same time, we are important and each of us is in need of comforting the other. Let us invite Jesus into the boats of our lives. Let us hand over our fears to him so that we can conquer them. He brings serenity into our storms. Because with God, life never dies. In these words, Pope Francis is telling us that we're all in this together. We've all got our individual and personal struggles at this moment, but we're stronger when we stand together. And we're even stronger when we let Jesus into our lives, when we share with him our troubles, and we share those with other people as well. So today, let's do our best to let Jesus into the boat with us. 
I'm going to hand over to my friend Georgia in a moment, and she's going to read the story of the calming of the storm to you. So I invite you to enter into this time of prayer by finding somewhere quiet, somewhere peaceful, where you can just listen to these words, maybe close your eyes and try and put yourself into the story. And we begin this time of prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the story of Jesus calming the storm from Luke's Gospel. Jesus and his disciples are stood on the shore of a huge lake. It is evening time. The sun is low in the sky, but it is warm. It has been a long day for them, being with Jesus as thousands of people came to see him speak. Many hundreds of people are still around the fields. Jesus is clearly worn out and ready to rest. Jesus says to all the disciples, Let's find a boat, go over to the other side of the lake. We can relax and have some peace. Leaving the crowd behind, they walk along the lakeside to a simple wooden boat. Picture the scene as one by one, Jesus and the other disciples climb into the boat. The last disciple pushes the boat into the water and they raise the white canvas sail. There are a few other boats on the lake. As the lakeside slips away, the noise of the crowds fade. In the evening sun, you feel the gentle breeze on your face. Jesus and the disciples are able to relax. Soon afterwards, the wind picks up and clouds gather. The sky darkens, even though the sun has not yet set. The surface of the lake becomes much rougher. White tipped waves begin to lap against the boat, which starts rocking more and more. The disciples in the boat get more tense and nervous as the weather worsens. They exchange some worried looks with one another. The waves are now coming over the side of the boat. The wind is howling and the boat is rocking so much from side to side that it doesn't feel safe. One of the disciples turns to where Jesus is sat and shouts over the wind, Jesus, do something. The heads of everyone on the boat turn to the stern, the back of the boat where Jesus is sitting. They see Jesus at the back of the boat. He's lying on the floor of the boat on the cushion, asleep. As the storm continues, another disciple shouts, Jesus, we're going to drown. The disciples closest to Jesus reaches him and grabs him by the shoulder, shaking him awake. Over the wind they shout, Jesus, don't you care if we drown? Jesus wakes up, and looks them straight in the eyes. Despite everything going on around them and the fear of everyone else in the boat, he appears to be perfectly calm. He stands up, rebukes the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. As soon as he spoke these words, the wind died down. The waves subsided until the lake was as smooth as glass. The boat stopped rocking and it was completely calm. The disciples let out a long, slow breath as everything in and out of the boat relaxes. Jesus looks at everyone in the boat and asks, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples ask each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Hi, I'm Harry and you join me here in our chapel at Walsingham House next to our beautiful tabernacle. And the tabernacle is always here to remind us, for us that wherever we are in our lives, however we're feeling and however the world is going, Jesus is always with us. And that's what we've been reflecting on in this assembly, thinking about the calming of the storm. But you might be sat there right now thinking, okay, I get the calming of the storm story, but what has that got to do with my life right now? 
And that's a fair question. What Pope Francis said to us back in March was that going through the storm as the disciples did, that physical storm with the fear of the waves and the fear of the wind, that brought up a lot of feelings in them, which we're having now through this pandemic. Fears of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. We've had a lot of uncertainty and there is still some uncertainty. We've had anxiety for ourselves, for our own health and for the health of those we love. Many people have had to watch people we know be really ill and some of us really sadly have known and loved people who have died. And they, all these things bring up a lot of emotions in us. And in the last few months, I don't know about you, but for me, these emotions have sometimes got the better of me. Sometimes they've made me react in ways that I wouldn't normally react. They've made me feel ways I wouldn't normally feel. And it's good to talk about those things. It's good to recognise that because we're not alone in feeling like that. We're all feeling like that in some way. And that's what Pope Francis said to us. We need to remember that when this storm is going on in our hearts and in our communities, we're all in the same boat together. And so to all bring this all together into a moment of prayer, I've got a few questions for you to reflect on. These questions will appear on the screen, so maybe as I say them and they appear on the screen, you can pause the video and just take a moment to reflect on all that's been said this morning in this assembly and what the answers to these questions are for you. So what is the storm in your life at the moment? This can be a hard thing to think about, but it's a good thing to name the storm, to name the things that are difficult and that we might be struggling. Maybe if you have a journal or just a piece of paper to hand, you could write a few notes down. No one else has to see it, but sometimes it's good to just make sense of what we're feeling by writing it down. So what is the storm in your life at the moment? The second question, who's there in the boat with you to help you in the storm? Who can support you? Is it a teacher or someone at school? Is it someone at home? Parents, siblings, grandparents, whoever it is at home. Is it a friend? As I said, sometimes we feel a bit stupid or a bit silly for having different emotions and for feeling, for feeling bad. But often when we just share how we feel with someone else, whoever it is, we can make sense of what we're feeling and realise that we're not the only people feeling that way. So who's in the boats with you? Someone you love, someone who cares about you. And as we've been saying today, someone who is always in the boat with us is Jesus. We can hear him in the silence of our hearts, perhaps in a moment of prayer at some point in our days, but we also see him acting through the people around us. And my third and final question for you, who can you lend a hand to? Sometimes we need to take someone else's hand, sometimes we can lend a hand to someone else. Are there people around you who you think might be struggling at the moment? How could you help them? Maybe they just need a bit of a hug, if you can do that in social distance ways. Maybe they just need a little text message to check in. Maybe you can help them with some school work. Maybe you can just make them a cup of tea or coffee or help with a dinner. Who can you support today and this week? So having reflected on those questions, let's bring it all to a moment of prayer. Wherever you are today, maybe just drop everything out of your hands. Maybe even close your eyes. Just focus and be still for a moment. And think of all these things we've been talking about this morning. Think about how you're feeling right now. Think about if Jesus was sat in the chair right next to you, what would you want to say to him? And what would he say to you? And now let's say the community prayer that Jesus taught us doesn't begin with my father or with your father, but it begins with our father. So we say together, our father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us at our virtual assembly today. It's been really nice to spend some time with you, even through the camera. If you're interested in what else we get up to with the Brentwood Catholic Youth Service, you can check us out on our different social media channels, uh, on YouTube or Instagram, at Brentwood CYS, or on Twitter and Facebook, just search for uh, the Brentwood Catholic Youth Service. And there are some great resources um, about mental health and looking after our own mental health and the mental health of others uh, on our website, ecys.net. And there's loads of great things for you to explore on there as well. So that's how you can keep in touch with us. We hope to see you again soon, either virtually or in person one day, hopefully. Um, but for now, take care and God bless.